so t- t- tell me because this is one of the funniest not funniest but like funny and heartfelt like your your lonely drive from ohio to la to work at machinima well do you actually do you know the story yeah hit me okay so i pack up my car in columbus ohio what kind of car was it it was a nissan altima yep um i packed Remember broccoli <laughs> <laughs> not the broccoli not the broccoli no that was the explorer oh those yeah <laughs> that was the explorer yeah 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 i had a, a car before the Altima. the Altima was my upgrade um so we packed it up i pull out of the apartment complex i'm like i'm going to la like peace out ohio one love a girl backs into my car and like smashes the back right quarter panel of it does the world trying to hate on you say don't go yeah yeah exactly and so um i ended up having to buy a one-way ticket shipping the car and so i came out um broke as hell dude. yeah broke, broke, broke as hell i took out a credit card um, and I maxed the credit card out because I had to buy a bed and a desk yeah. and a TV, right? Like just the essentials. I had like uh, some stuff from my apartment at Ohio State, but um, had to max out my credit card at IKEA and uh, moved in with Optic J and Optic Diesel, who were also at Machinima and mm-hmm. obviously also an Optic and started my career. The original Optic house. The original first Optic house and started my career in Burbank, uh, California, which is outside of Los Angeles. The funny thing about that house, which a lot of people don't know about me, um, is my Justin TV Twitch background there. So we started that house as a streaming house. And right. we set up four, basically my computer at the end and then four other Xboxes. Yeah. So like C Nanners, Hutch, Diesel, myself, Jay, we all could play, um, which at the time I believe was Black Ops 1 matches. Um, and I was streaming on Justin TV those matches to maybe like, you know, 50 people. 100 people max no uh, no no. i saw it get up to like a thousand at one point yeah, we're like was, we're like holy fuck we're like we're doing something massive. here yeah, yeah yeah we were you guys had the check the million dollar yeah check. The million dollar check above yeah. it and stuff and it was so cool and actually um my channel because we streamed on my channel but it was a, obviously a group effort always yeah. and i very rarely streamed just by myself sometimes did um my channel was one of the first six or seven channels to get partnered um, on Twitch TV. Mm-hmm. So it was a really cool experience for me to learn about live streaming and really was the, the, the era of live streaming was just about to take off and boom. So uh, very exciting and, and, you know, worked there. I was uh, the community manager at Machinima for Respawn, which was their big kind of shooter channel, which was what Machinima was really known for. In my oh, yeah, opinion. absolutely. Um, I helped start the I'm- kind of multi-channel network business there live and esports so spent a lot of time learned a lot there it was my first real like real job hey first she, real job. He, he won't jump out chasing a bird would he i don't think so i just you know I just bro the one thing out. about my dogs is that i think like i have the most athletic dogs in the fucking history of dogs well that henry I'm, dog is henry it, henry is supposed to be a lazy couch dog but he isn't he's like this muscular beast that can clear a a five foot like barricade with no issues he can jump from us he doesn't even need to run he can literally jump from where we're standing six foot six six feet up we i don't even know like that they should still be classifying them as dogs when they're like that big i mean he looks like a like a cheetah or maybe a small lion a young a young lion. he does walk like a lion if you yeah, look I mean, at his it is it is, so... is big neck like it, it is it is one of those big things now all right so you, you ran live at at machinima and the well, a lot me... right like because we partnered with twitch at machinima we tried to start youtube live streaming they didn't get it so we partnered with twitch i mean there was a lot of stuff that happened at machinima um there was a lot of things we did right there's a lot of things that we we failed at i was fortunate enough to be there in the heyday when it was growing and so for me it allowed me to manage a team at a young age it allowed me to try new things and get money to invest in different areas yeah. so um th- from my career standpoint it was a huge opportunity and i think the the advice that i have too out, out there for people watching want to get in gaming is you you like got to set yourself on on specifically what you want to do like if you want to work in the gaming video space you have to look at opportunities even if you've got a volunteer and not and not oh, yeah. paid in, uh, opportunity and you have to be a first mover into these spaces you were first mover in esports i was first mover in gaming video like you've got to kind of carve out um your niche and it's obviously super competitive because there's not a lot of positions in the industry but there's a lot of people that want to do it so you've got to figure out like what am i going to do to stand out from uh, from these people and a lot of times people are like well what did you major in college what's that nothing to do with that Mm -hmm. my major in college was communications has literally nothing to do i learned zero about what it took to run what I do now and, and previous businesses. My, my self-identification and self-auditing, like it's, it's something that I preach like always, like 
if you want to be a professional gamer and you just don't have it, that's, that's that your path doesn't have to end there. Right. You know, you you can you can pivot, do something else, and and that's like one of the most important things in life. Period. If you don't know how to pivot or get away from something that isn't going your way, you're gonna be in Very that same true. path. You you have to move. You have to get over that barricade. You have to pivot essentially is, yeah. is, is is what it boils down to um yesterday you guys announced that you guys were gonna be okay no 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 because you're not giving yourself enough credit here at machinima you you, you you sort of created this idea of machinima live yeah they you know youtube didn't get it at first so you guys went and cut a deal with uh twitch. with twitch yep and eventually you know the the success of that kind of kind of opened the eyes of youtube yeah and then they well, said it they, took a little they, bit but yeah, yeah but but yeah. then they're like you know what let's, let's grab this this young superstar up and come well i had a quick pit stop after machinima i went to um i actually went back to major league gaming as the vp of programming. oh shit you did now it was only eight months you did yeah i did I so went did back. rishi too yeah. yeah so i got to go back which was really cool for me because it obviously that's where my career started and so to go back there as like a vp was um awesome and and, and i love the founder Sundance and Sepso and the guys that are at MLG. So it was really good experience. Um, you know, it was, it was short lived of eight months and, and obviously I went there thinking it would be much longer than that, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, was recruited to go to YouTube to start the gaming vertical. Yeah. So obviously gaming had been big on YouTube, but they had never, um, specialized the vertical, right? It was basically rolled up under entertainment. Yeah. And so they were like, you know what? It's a big business for us. We need people with the background in the gaming industry. So they parsed out the product eng marketing business teams into into one vertical for Eng, gaming. meaning engine engineers yeah sorry yeah. so people that are actually making the products yeah. uh, on the back end and um <clears throat> i started that team there was two people on the team at the time and and we have ramped it out globally now um so it's it's pretty it's pretty exciting so that's that is why and where I'm at YouTube today. And yeah. I've been there for four years now. Running four years? Is it really? Have yeah, you four, been that long? Four years in November. Get that, out of here, dude. Yeah. Time flies. Now, uh, you know, when you brought up uh, Sepso and, and, and Sundance, like I got this flashback of They'd be good of, dudes like, on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're they're going to be yeah, 100%. Sure. I, yeah, maybe even doing both at the same time might be good. I, I, I want to do, uh, well, it's going to be sunny. I'm going to do all of them individually yeah. and the, the podcast, I'm going to do the podcast with them individually, but I also want the trifecta, uh, Sundance, Sepso and Adam. Yeah. I mean, I'll be, that's one I'll definitely watch. If you, yeah. if you love esports, cause the, the rich history from those, three. Yeah. like I've got a history in esports of, you know, maybe, maybe 12 years. Whew. There, there's deeper and, and much better stories. Anyway, so as you were bringing that up, I, I remember clearly this one time. It was an MLG event. It was like 2011. It was during Black Ops uh, 1. And we were walking around, and and you were giving me the tour. It was like uh, maybe my second or third event. No, she's cool. He's cool. He's cool. I keep on calling him she yeah, for no, some reason. It's upsetting me one more time. Okay, I apologize. No, no, no. We're not. We're going to continue with the podcast. Sorry. Um, this is Riley. Riley's, Riley, come here. Riley's like yeah, something yeah, that would name one of my nieces. Yeah. Riley, right. what's up, man? Anyway, um, and I remember you telling me like who was who, right? I hadn't met Sepso or oh, Sundance. Right. Yeah, yeah, when we first and, met. And uh, I remember Sepso was wearing like this this really flossy like white like suit. Totally. And then he's like, "Oh, that's that's Mike Sepso. He's, like, the, he's one of the guys that started MLG." And I was like, yeah. "Who?" He's like, "The guy that smells like money." And I was like, "Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, that guy. You know, really flossy. Oh, totally, you know, I mean, dude, you know, I do. he still smells like money." Yeah, and and I remember like. At, you know, during the heyday of MLG, and, and unfortunately, the heyday of MLG to me was always when Call of Duty wasn't the main attraction. Yeah, mine too. It, oh, it, yeah, I mean, it was Halo, right? It, Halo, yeah. StarCraft. Yeah, like yeah. There, there was this sort of, there was this sort of period in MLG where, in MLG events, where it was like a a who's who of gaming, sort of like dope. fashion, yeah. like party central. Like Twitch had a party at the end of every single great MLG. Parties too. They great, had, they had great parties, yeah. parties, yeah. and it didn't cost that much. Like, a, well, no, we were easy to please at that time. Yeah, we're much more. We're, the gaming issue is much yeah, more yeah, divas yeah. now. Well, yeah. of course, yeah. I, th I think we had large part in that too. The way that we raised our <laughs> our little brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. your little brothers, my sons. Yeah. Um,